So I've reviewed some of these plug and play joystick consoles in the past. These are joysticks with built in games that plug directly into your TV. The company Jack Specific is probably the most famous of these. Their joysticks had very cool designs that just by looking at them you kind of knew what kind of game to expect. But then I picked up this mystery joystick. It's not made from Jack Specific and from the design I'm not completely sure what exactly to expect on this. It does have a lot of uh, secondhand store price tags on it so it's certainly been on its own adventure but what is it? Joystick 30 and I was like oh no this isn't what I think it is is it? Yep, 30 crappy games. I've had enough experience with Chinese multi-games in one to know this is going to suck. You know the Action 52 for Nintendo? Those really horribly low quality slap together games that if you knew how bad they were you probably wouldn't have bought it? Yeah, that's what this is going to be. And I'm going to look at all 30 games. Classic hits such as Push the Box, Grass Cutter, and Matching Tiles. So sit back, relax, and get ready for some time you're never going to get back. Here you build a road to create a path from a van to a house. You have different road tiles like straight or curved and each one has a set amount you can use per level. So if you fail to connect the road you got a few repositioning tries or you're gonna have to restart the level. Now surprisingly this wasn't a bad start to the collection but the sluggish joystick did not complement this at all. For this style of game you need more of a pad than a joystick. It's just really uncomfortable controls and it makes it for a very unfun experience. So this one has you trying to clear a board before the timer runs out by matching tiles. If you fail to do so, you lose a life and get to hear the Contra Death sound for some reason. There are some rules to this matching game. I click on two matching tiles and they wouldn't disappear. But I didn't care too much to find out those rules because, you know, I hate matching games. I, I just can't seem to escape these things. Ugh. Alright, this one looks like it might be a little like uh, RC Pro-Am. <laughs> what, what is this, a loading screen? Come on. Alright, this is some sort of side racing game with a very annoying engine sound. If opposing cars hit you, you go flying into the wall, and with some luck you can use the brake to avoid that happening, but not likely. And it's just this forever straight road. The map down below represents that you're turning but you're just driving in a straight line and this game really hurts your eyes when you're at top speed. I would probably recommend to avoid playing this game, it doesn't seem to be worth the risk of permanent eye damage. Oh okay, some selectable cutesy characters. And in this one you'll be jumping across broken roads to get to the end of the level. Along the way you'll have to hit these checkpoints but every checkpoint is like a reset of the course. You race 30 seconds, hit a checkpoint, race that same thing again, race 30 seconds, hit a checkpoint, race that same thing again. You also get a bit of glitching at the top of the screen there. Each character has a different course, but each course is only one level. So it's practically a demo, it's like they rushed these games out or something. Eh. So this one is like Namco's pole position, but with futuristic trucky cars. You have a certain distance to travel in a certain amount of time and hitting opponents will slow you down. Other features in this game is it's one level long and the road appears on the other side of the screen occasionally. You know, you may want to spread out the racing games a bit, but okay. Ah great, from the makers of Big Racing. Ugh. Your fuel works as a timer in this one and you'll have to get to the end of the course before your fuel runs out. And just like big racing you get the overcrowded roads, uh, your eyes being torn to shreds by the scrolling, and the classic ear bleeding engine sound. These all being staples from the absolutely uncredited creators. Which is an interesting note on the Joystick 30, there's absolutely no credited creators anywhere on this. I suppose that's supposed to be the O in the word towers, but hey I'm just trying to make some logical connection here. 
So in this one, the little froggy guy walks right and left, and you have to hold the button down to jump onto the platforms. The longer you hold the button, the higher he jumps. If you fall, that's it. You're going to have to restart the game. It's quite punishing, actually. But here's the thing, you can't actually control his walking left to right. He walks across the screen and to head in the other direction, he has to hit a wall. As far as I can tell, you have no control over his moving, you can only jump. I had every button and direction on the controller and I just couldn't control his walking and this makes it insanely difficult. Well, these games may be simple, but they're certainly cruel, I guess. This one's a shoot 'em up game in the vein of 1942. It features power-ups and pattern-based boss battles. And this game did appear to be more competently created than the other ones so far. But the issue here is it's just so generic for the genre that it's just not interesting to play. So here we have a Gradius clone type game. The thing about clone games is you have a blueprint laid out already for you. You should try to improve on that existing blueprint. But this is a downgrade of Gradius. Why would you want to play a downgrade of Gradius? I mean, come on guys, at least give me the illusion you have a creative spark. So here we have an archery game. A random win is selected that messes with your shots left and right a little. You hold the button to select an up and down angle for your shot, which determines its height position on the target. And with the target moving, you have to release your shot at the right time to hit the center while dealing with the angle and win factors. You have a qualifying score to pass the round, three tries, and a set amount of arrows to get it. And this actually is kind of a decent game, but I kind of know I've seen this somewhere before. Oh yeah, track and field for the NES. But this game just isn't like it, it's a completely stolen game. It looks like they ripped the actual sprites from the original Konami's track and field for the NES. It just flipped the score screen. But anyway, certainly not an original idea. Gee, I wonder if this is going to be another Konami track and field ripoff. Yep. Well, some of the art and animation is slightly different, so I guess they have a bit of a legal leg to stand on, I suppose. In this one, when the disc gets into one of the target boxes, you shoot it. Uh, not quite as good as the archery game, but, uh, eh. It seems like a basic Pac-Man style game, except to kill the bad guys, you try to crush them with these paintbrushes. But it's just so difficult, because these guys follow your every move, I, I couldn't get them. And is that Pedo Bear? Nah, it couldn't be Pedo Bear, could it? Oh, yeah, that's definitely Pedo Bear. In this one, you grab fish with a crank hand. You have a certain amount of time to reach a certain amount of fish to catch per level. There's this dark fish that if you grab him, he blows your hands to bits. This one actually was kind of enjoyable and has some nice ocean wave graphics, but it's about as fun as the latest iPhone free to play game, I suppose. I'm pretty sure I've seen a, an Atari game like this before. Uh, in this one, you drop depth charges to kill your enemies. And much like a lot of the other games on here, you just see everything right at the beginning. So you end up getting bored pretty quick on this. In this game, you control a bug catching net and attempt to catch butterflies. In each stage, you have a certain amount of butterflies to catch before progressing. As you advance, bugs start appearing that can take your lives away. And this one is actually kind of fun. The evil bugs randomly move around the screen if you put your net too close to them, so you actually have a satisfying risk reward strategy thing going on here. It's always neat to see simplicity being satisfying. They actually did a good job on this one. So this is a generic uh, Soki Bond type game. You pretty much have to move crates to a designated spot before time runs out. Now this is quite the popular puzzle game, spawning numerous clones just like this one, but personally I have little interest in these style of games. But I'm sure it's a decent clone, I guess it is, I don't know. Over the years there's been an explosion of lawn cutting simulators, and here is one of those examples, Grass Cutter. Your goal is to cut all the grass on the screen before the time runs out while maneuvering around various obstacles. A rain cloud appears randomly and will actually regrow previous cut areas. And after thinking about it for a little, I figured that if I was cutting real grass, I would probably be enjoying myself a lot more. Hmm, 
Hmm, another fine title screen there. Choose from three sets of graphic types, and you get to play a fairly standard match three game. I really can't complain too much on this one. Uh, the graphics are cute, the joystick responds fine, and it seems to be made with some sort of competence there. So, uh, nice job on that one. All right. What is that thing? So here you have a Frogger style game, but you play as a cute puppy trying to cross the street. You can get a boot power up to increase your speed, and to finish the level you need keys to unlock the exit. Now I do like the fact in this game that even though you can see the Frogger inspiration in it, it's just different enough to be its own game and not be considered a clone. Ah, it's a Columns clone. Now before Columns there were these types of games already, but I always found the Sega version the best and most memorable. Unlike this one. And you know, that's the problem with these clone games. You'll always get judged by the best version of the game you're trying to copy. Okay, now we have a Zuma clone. So please take everything I said about the previous game, replace the word Columns with Zuma, and Sega with Popcan Game. And there you go, that's my opinion on it. Okay, this one, ugh, it's a matching game. You run around flipping over tiles looking for matches and boxes while being chased by porcupines, I suppose. Your goal is to clear the board and as you progress, obstacles will appear in your path. So you'll need to find matches to clear out some of the boxes to get to the unreachable ones. You can also use these houses to travel to other parts of the screen, but so can your opponents. And I'm actually having fun in a matching game. Somehow they did it. They made a matching game fun. Just add the ability to move in some enemies and matching games can be good. Not only is this a decent game on the Joystick 30, but possibly the best matching game ever made. That's eh, probably a clone anyway. <laughs> what is happening? In this one you charge a power meter and attempt to leap over a little piece of road. Every time you jump, whether you make it or not, the road piece resets. So there's only really one stage really to this. It keeps track of your landings and attempts and it's pretty tough actually, and not that bad. Certainly reminds me of a mobile game and if anyone's looking for an idea for a mobile game, maybe here you go. Oh, whatever. In this one, you try to keep the ball from hitting the side of the screen. Up and down controls the side bumpers, and left and right controls the top ones. You can get power-ups to decrease the ball's speed or extend the length of your bumpers. Now, this certainly doesn't look like much, but it's actually a good reflex game. It's just a little too bare bones, I guess I can say, to just keep you interested. Well, a title screen that's not completely nonsensical. Fish Quiz has you rotating fish of different colors in order to duplicate the picture on the right. You have a certain amount of turns to do it, and this one is actually a lot more harder than it looks. I didn't care too much for this game, but I can certainly say this one was put together all right. Wow, look at the graphics on this. Oh. This game is a game with mini games. Kind of a neat surprise on an already multi-game joystick. Each game you can find available at these houses on the map. There's a platforming stage, a hide and seek shuffle game, a rock paper scissors duel, a mazy dodge rescue your friend type game, and a match the shape game. Unfortunately that's it, it's just one level long and then the game restarts. So it just kind of seemed like a one level demo and that's too bad, this one looked actually very promising. And definitely it was the most visually impressive game on the collection so far. So in this one you move this little guy around and try to delete lines of blocks. He can jump and carry blocks and you'll have to avoid getting hit by the falling ones. This is another decent game both in design and graphics. It's starting to look like they saved the best games for last. Hooray, it's Kirby! This one you'll be fighting bad guys and collecting keys to rescue your girlfriend, uh, Kirby. 
I did have some problems with the joystick when moving the character in this one. Now the joystick is second hand and there might have been some wear on it, but this is only the second game I really noticed some big controller issues. So the movement was affecting the gameplay too much that I just really couldn't enjoy this one. But it does seem like another top game on the joystick 30. Final game on the collection, and a happy mouse. Oh, okay, so they decided to end the collection with Whack-A-Mole. Well, actually, I think those are gophers, but uh, certainly not a great end of the collection. But it does leave you with a question to ponder. Why is there a picture of a mouse in the title screen when you're whacking gophers? This mystery may never be answered. So, as expected, the Joystick 30 is full of games simply not worth your time. From inferior clones, uninteresting and unfun games, and short one-level games that seem to be unfinished. There are a few exceptions that will briefly entertain you, but you can't help shake that feeling that you probably could be playing something a lot better right now. Still, it's always interesting to play these uh, multi-game collections. Once in a while you need something to remind you to kind of appreciate the games you're playing now, because they're probably not as bad as the ones on the Joystick 30. Thanks for watching. <laughs>